reports on Maurice Carver, a successful breeder from the world of fighting dogs. It will always be an honor to write about someone as fun as Maurice Carver. Many things are said about this Texan. And those who met him either liked him very much or did not. Even though I knew Maurice, I wasn't close friends with him. I've heard so much about him that I thought it best to just watch him. He showed up at a meeting in a very hidden location in Texas. He arrived with cowboy boots and a Stetson hat. People gathered to hear great stories, which Master Maurice Carver told. If you paid attention, you asked the right questions. With Maurice Carver in good spirits he would share true gems of knowledge with you. I didn't trust Maurice Carver, so I didn't do business with him. But my friend Jeff McManus knew him. He started talking to me about the Carver dogs and game fowl. He was going to San Antonio to see if he bought it to create it. In a short time, Jeff went from a beginner to an experienced dogman. Jeff was a man who bred bully son bloodline dogs. But he liked the stomper slash peaches line. However, he bred dogs similar to Maurice recommended him. And consequently, Jeff became a successful breeder. He was one of the best dogmen I've seen during my time with dogs. I've always liked the dogs, the lineage, the iron head. Which is the strand my dogs are bred. I always had the idea of using these dogs in my family. These iron head dogs would seem to match any bloodline. I asked Jeff, C. Maurice, if he would sell me a dog, give blood. And that it wasn't, of a false pedigree. I believed that by Jeff, meeting Maurice, I would be able to get a dog, straight from him. Then on a wet morning, before the sun came up. I Jerry Hale, and Jeff, loaded my truck. We continued on to Hill Country, which was where Maurice Carver lived. It was in a renovated bus station. We woke up Maurice, and he was happy to see us. And after a few hours, he was even happier. He was wearing slippers, scaring the dogs and chickens, on the hill, which was infested with rattlesnakes. Maurice Carver, I believe it was man, who lost most dogs, bitten by rattlesnakes. I told him he could fix it, if he could, some pintadas. In typical Carver style, he said, son, I've seen these guinea fowls, around the fighting cocks, and they gouge their eyes out. So the dogs will have to settle for the snakes. I replied, are you saying that a guinea can beat a fighting cock? And he answered me, they are dirty fighters, they usually drive out the fighting cock, they can finish one off. I'm not sure if a fighting rooster can hit one with steel, so I'll avoid anyone nearby. Speaking of snakes or not, Maurice Carver was a realistic guy who could laugh at anything. As we talked about the rattlesnakes, he started to tell a story about his brother. He said that his brother died mysteriously. And that he had been stung by a rattlesnake, and that he was sure that was what led to his death. And sure enough, Maurice was right, Years later the herpetologist discovered that snake venom can kill in the long run. We talked for hours, until we got to the dogs. I made it clear that I wanted to know exactly how the dog I was going to buy was bred. He assured me that I would have a straight dog. He only had about a dozen dogs at the time. I would take one of them and he would tell me. You don't want this one. And I looked more carefully, and with his help, I chose a brindle, the most slender of the bunch. And that he was the son of Stompanato, not Iron Head. So I insisted to him that I wanted an Iron Head. 
And Maurice told me there wasn't one around, and I'd do better with a dog from the Bulletin line. What he said was right, and he sent me home smiling, and looking forward to her growing up. He told me to breed my dog from the Rufus line and I would love the result. He said to me, don't go out selling them all. And he said that I wouldn't need to test the BH, that I would just need to mate. I named her, Morris's BH, she showed me to be a real fighter. That's right I didn't listen to him, and I bred her in the first heat, after the test. It was the only litter she had, and spectacular dogs were born. Champion Jack, JM the Dog, Snort Pig, Teddy Bear, and my favorite Davis Bell. I was in a fight, between Jade, against Art. In deciding who would be the arbiter, the Houston boys wanted Maurice. But the local people weren't happy about that as Maurice was close to art sponsors. After much discussion, Maurice smiled and said, Son, you need a reference, I'll be your timekeeper. But you need to lend me your watch, because someone inside the ring stole my Rolex. I said, I'm betting money on this one, is anyone going to take it? Maurice, stood up and said shouting, Anyone wants T.O. fight, against this man, and me A.S. timekeeper. So everyone agreed, and it happened. After paying off my bets, somewhere along the way, I remembered my watch, and asked for it. He smiled and said, thought I was traveling with your watch, huh? I gave it to the plumber, for you, even though I needed one. Maurice could handle any situation. He would make you like it. We met at a motel in San Antonio. We were going to a big fight, and we left at the crack of dawn. As we passed the interchange on the highway, you could see the car lights for miles. In each direction, there were two police cars. I later learned that they told Maurice, next time, to go one at a time. So that it wouldn't be suspicious, and they would have to investigate. And they said they would go to another part of the county until the fight was over. We ended up in a rooster arena, for one of the best fights I've ever seen. When the sun came up, E.D. Weaver walked in and said, Damn, everyone here must have had two cars. I went out to look at the parking lot, and it looked like a car sale. As usual, Maurice had the best competitors, and he directed the fight with precision. As soon as one fight ended, the other pair that was going to fight was already ready to start. The big dogs and the good times will remain forever in the memory of those who were there. There are too many good Maurice Carver stories to tell, but one of the best was when George Gilman and Billy Don. Down to Get a Dog, by Maurice, in the 70s. George said, what a place. War cocks mounted on the windowsill fighting. A wooden sculpture of two dogs fighting and a full-length photo of a naked woman on the wall. You can see a treadmill in an adjacent room with some equipment hanging from the walls. Puppies scurrying underfoot, snarling as Pat prepared food for them in the kitchen. Maurice came in and told George. Stay close to the boys, as soon as Pat feeds the pups she'll cook us some steaks. George said he kind of looked over the situation and said, Okay Maurice, don't worry, we're going to eat at McDonald's. Maurice was said to have killed a man because he tried to rob him. And that he wasn't sentenced by the jury. He was considered, for years, a mighty man in the San Antonio region. Maurice was indeed a character, but an admirable one. The things I wrote about him will give the reader an idea of what he was like. The macho image that impressed so many was not what impressed me. Maurice had great inner strength and was a good bulldog. 
I can say with certainty that he was one of the best breeders of all time, and he did a lot for the breed, and for hunting. There's so much more to Maurice. If others, many of whom knew Maurice better than I, felt compelled to write a story or two, it would be very interesting for the Brotherhood. A wise man once told me, take the cotton wool out of your ears and put it in your mouth. My name is Rodolfo Luis, and I invite everyone to enjoy the knowledge of this wonderful breed. Subscribe so you don't miss the next video. God bless you all. I went.